I've still got a couple more. I've got the future of this industry, and no, no, maybe that's the last one. Oh, do I just keep on chewing through them? Um, is it your turn or my turn? Yeah, I can go. Hey, I'm Tom. I'm a fifth year mechatronic and computer science student at UQ, and I'm here with Tyson, the program lead of mechatronic engineering at UQ. Oh. Um, I might go first. Just no. what is mechatronic engineering? Uh, it's the best engineering. <laughs> um, mechatronic engineering is, is a very broad um, set of disciplines all rolled into one. You've got your mechanical, your electrical, your software, and uh, at the end, you come out with all of these, these skill sets uh, that you can apply in different areas. Um, so automation being the, the key motivator for this, this course. Yeah, so automation control, robotics, everyone wants to like, know more about robotics, I feel. Yeah, yeah, so um, it's all about making things do what you want them to do. Uh, so Tom, why, why did you choose the University of Queensland? I suppose uh, it had good rankings, it had a really nice campus and I was never really planning on moving away so it just seemed convenient to study while living at home in Brisbane. So that's why you chose this campus. Why did you specifically choose to study mechatronic engineering? Um, the best engineering. The best engineering. But before knowing that I wanted to do engineering, I suppose I liked maths and physics at high school and you know I like mental puzzles so engineering seemed appropriate and then starting at UQ I had done no coding experience. Um, I didn't really know what mechatronic engineering was, but I found that I liked the introductory aspects of mechanical, software, electrical. I couldn't really decide, so I decided I'd go with mechatronics to kind of jumble it all together, as you said. Yep. It's oh, been good. Haven't looked back since. And so, who should study mechatronic engineering? I think you just described the perfect personality type as people who are creative, people who uh, are interested in problem solving. Um, so people who are attracted to the automation of, of systems, uh, robotics is, is particularly appealing as, as we sort of getting more and more advanced in technology, you, you want to keep pace with that yep. um, evolution of the sort of the lay of the land. Mechatronics is the, the front and centre, uh, we're sort of driving that. So if you want to be on the front line of, of technology, anyone that's, that sort of fits that bill, I think. Sure. So it sounds like you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Okay, um, what do you love about your degree? Apart from the lecturers, the quality lecturers. <laughs> uh, what do I love about my degree? I suppose I like the people that I've met. Um, definitely dif different from the people I've met before coming to uni. And the subjects I'm doing now are much more interesting um, and more targeted for that kind of robotics, machine learning kind of stuff, so that's really cool. Um, but I have found from the start of university to now, just the culture and the people around uni have got me through and the subjects have become increasingly more interesting and, and applicable for industry, which has been really good. Yeah, yeah. You, you, learn the, you learn the theory at the start and you get to apply it at the end. Yeah. It's, it's a rewarding degree, yeah, I think, in that respect. Yeah. And Tyson, if I wanted to do a major with mechatronic engineering, what are my options? All right, there's a couple of options there. Um, you you specialise in mechatronic engineering and you can do a major in computer engineering or mining engineering um, okay. as, as you do that specialization. So I, I don't know anything about mining engineering, but um, the, the sort of discipline extends in all areas of, of robotics. And mm. for the, the last decade, I've been working on automating uh, large mining robots. Um, so, so that's definitely applicable. Now I recall one of your first lectures in a third year subject was all about your mining automation. That's pretty cool. I might have been flexing a little bit <laughs> to the students. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's your favourite place on campus? I've come to feel like a lot of the engineering buildings are, are quite homely, um, particularly like the library. But my favourite memories come, yeah, Red Room, the Dust Bowl where we'd, we'd play footy and, and some other events around there, or, or even just like the natural amphitheatre near the lakes. Um, yeah. yeah, particularly just for the memories from the fun times. So, Tyson, what are the best aspects of the course? I think the quality lecturers, uh, they're, they're quite attractive, they're quite handsome and they know what they're talking about. Obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, look, the best aspects of the course is that you're actually going to learn things that you can apply as soon as you graduate. You, you walk out of here and if, if you can find a job, uh, well, you will, you will find a job. That's guaranteed just about with mechatronics, I think. Um, very high success rate in employability. 
but you also get to, to throw your newfound skills at problems straight away, start solving problems, start adding value yeah, sort of instantly. Cool. Um, Maybe a little bit of training. Yeah. Uh, it's a very, very uh, thrown in the deep end and succeed kind of, kind of job. All right. Uh, what is a day? What is a day in the life of a student like? I should know the answer to that, but uh, we'll get your. <laughs> it hasn't been too long for you, has it? Oh, um, a little bit. I, I suppose like when I started university, it seemed a little bit like school. You know, I was coming in quite often, um, trying to interact with people as much as I could, and slowly my schedule has become a bit more free. But it was really nice having that freedom of of time, like time scheduling, I guess. Um, but I'd definitely say the the social interactions. Uh, between lectures have never really stopped and I'm still being quite a studious person, yeah. you know, going to my lectures, but that's just me. Are there any exchange opportunities? Yeah, so I think one of the, the things I'm most thankful for at UQ has been um, my third year exchange when I went to Edinburgh. Uh, that was particularly like the best six months I've had. Yeah. Um, and there are also more opportunities to do that um, with funding available, which I, I, I'm hoping to utilize at the end of the year. So, where are you going? I'm hoping to go on a second one to America, mm -hmm. but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. Um, my last question for you, uh, Tom, is what advice would you give a high school student? Uh, I'd say don't rule out anything when you, when you start uni. So, I was almost put off the software side because I'd never done coding. Um, and there were particularly a lot of people who had when I started my first coding course. But I've surprised myself now, I've caught up to them. And I think you can't, you can't compare your you know, chapter one with someone else's chapter four. That's so, true. And it's rewarding when you, get, when you do that catch up as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say just don't rule out anything. You'll find you could end up in a different pathway than, than you expected. And so my last question for you, Tyson, is what does the future of this industry look like? Are robots taking over the world? Uh, they're, not, they're not taking over the world. That's, that's a question that you get a lot. Um, <laughs> I'd say the landscape is changing mm -hmm. and the skill sets are changing. So um, when, when I design a robot uh, to do a task, it's making some people's jobs easier and it's creating different, different roles in that industry as well. So you're not getting rid of an operator, you're creating somebody who maintains a, a system, a process. Um, and so, so everybody has to sort of level up their skills as, as technology advances. Thanks, Tyson. <laughs> oh, thanks, Tom. <laughs>